going on, everybody? This is Joe. And Amy. And we are back with another episode of Kamigawa, a visual novel. Last time, we made our way through Tawashi into the Undercity. Uh, we first, I guess, found our way to speaking to some of the moon folk that were around. In fact, a trio of moon folk that we were able to find um, who kind of, you know, gave us the the their cocky responses to us asking them questions, etc. Then we ended up in the Undercity where we met up with some of the Okiba, some of the um, Nizumi or the rat folk. Uh, and yeah, it was just sets of trios of bad guys that we kind of had to talk off the ledge or at least talk with uh, in hopes that they wouldn't try to fight and hurt us or whatever. Um, and I should say that's at least how we chose to handle it. We could have been more aggressive, but through your choices, Amy, you were trying more so to be at least somewhat diplomatic with them, yeah. as opposed to just like throwing our weight around and threatening them well, with violence. Well, that doesn't work ever. Right. So. Yeah. But anyway, so we are here uh, to keep going with this game. Hey, everybody, uh, please don't forget if you are here and you are enjoying any of and all of the things that we are doing, please don't forget to subscribe and ring that bell. You will get notifications whenever any of our videos come out, including more of this series, if there is more after tonight. Again, I don't know how long this game is. I still don't, um, but we shall see. So let's get back into it. Ah, right. That's not, that's not what we wanted. Uh, uh, oh, I forgot it does uh, this every time. Because I, yeah, here we go. This is what we wanted. Yeah. Okay. No, no, I want to load, please, not save. Thank you. Anyway, <laughs> let's try this again. There okay, Amy, where do we want to go? Do we want to go? Sorry about that, everybody. Do we want to go to the Fighting Pits, the Kozue Saki Bar, or the Flea Market? Um, oh, yeah, I think I said I always love a good flea market. Okay. You know, um... <laughs> I'm not a drinker. For the sake bar. But I no. I don't know. I think the fighting pits are going to be kind of intense. So okay. I think we start with the flea market. I think the flea market's probably a great place to have lots of different conversations sure. and get some information. Sure. Which, you know, depending on which member of our party is doing the talking, might not be like, you know, that I might not be. I think we just all split up. And hit like as many tables as we can. Sure. And just, you know, try to get as much information as possible. I can respect that. All right, let's give it a try then. Without like drawing suspicion. Yeah. Because that could be an issue as well. Sure. Well, and again, to me, uh, we look like um, overly dressed, right. but it's also possible that just everybody dresses like this in Tawashi, and so it's not weird. Like, we don't stand out because of that. Well, no, we stand out because we're dressed like soldiers. Imperials. Yeah, okay, good point. So, flea market it is. Let's do it. The air is thick and wet in the packed flea market of the Undercity. You weave in and out of the stalls, looking for particularly loud-mouthed vendors. There you go, Amy. Mm -hmm. Toma, how are we going to find anyone who... He trips over a traitor bent down under his stall. Ugh! Found a guy. Oh, is, <laughs> I wonder if this is the same dude from uh, last time. Yeah, maybe. I do not remember his voice, so I'm just going to go with it. Hey, watch it! It's the traitor from the shrine. Okay, we were right. You again! He folds his arms and scowls at you. Are you following me? It, are you with the Otawara moon folk? He turns to the stall next to him. I told you they were coming for me. The vendor in the next stall rolls his eyes and dismisses the traitor. We're not coming to get you. What are you doing down here? I've got to earn a living somehow. I can't just take a day off. Who do you think I am? Look, we just want to ask you a few questions. The traitor strides forward into your space. Are you at least going to be courteous and purchase something? Of course, absolutely not. Or if we see something of value. Uh, let's see, say if we see something of value. You brush him aside and scan the various colorful weapons and parts scattered across the workbench. 
Where did you get all of that? I assure you, these are some of the finest pieces of tech in Tawashi. Toma twirls a familiar Imperial Tonto. Where did it come from? But where did it come from? Sorry. He stole it. We could use this to our advantage <laughs> and get him to talk. Blackmail him or just buy something? You just buy something. You shake your head at Toma, indicating that you will not pursue blackmail. He puts the Tonto down, disappointed. My companion likes this Tonto. We'll take it. Excellent! It's this much! He gestures to a number on a hollow sign with an eye-watering amount of zeros attached to it. Oh. What? It's not even... You silence Toma with a look. Barter or accept that price? Ugh, oh, damn. <laughs> I... I mean, he's already kind of told us some stuff. The traitor? Yeah. Um, do we feel like he really has that much more information to give is the question. Don't ask me, man. Because it's barter if he doesn't, and it's <laughs> accept price if he does. I don't know. I mean, this guy seems very much to have, like, a victim mentality. So if you, like you said, if you want to get any information out of him at all, it seems like except the price might just be the way to go whereas like barter he's going to be like but how will I make money Ugh. you know like if, it, if I charge you less but it also like it's it's also possible that I mean he jacked up that price so right. bartering him down to something reasonable would still let him live and he might not complain about it if it was not necessarily on the up and up for him to charge that price to begin with yeah I'm I'm not thinking about that as much as I'm thinking about whether his information is going to be that useful or not. Sure. So I'm just trying to gauge if I feel like he's going to be the person we need to speak to here, or since we're at the flea market, we have other options. Right, right, right. Um, just accept the price, I guess. Okay. We're Imperials. We probably have money, right? <laughs> Fine. You swipe your electronic coin purse across the trader's reader. Toma leans on the workbench. So? We have reason to believe that the Yoruma Reckoners are aiding some dangerous moonfolk with a deadly weapon. You what? They have a deadly weapon? Why is everyone so calm? You have to stop them at once! Trying to, man. That's what we're trying to do. <laughs> Well, why didn't you say so? You share an exasperated look with Toma. We... We're looking for a specific group of Yoroma Reckoners. How can we find them? Hmm, they're a hard group to pin down. Tell us something we don't know. Look, there's a guy who knows the gangs down here well. He's with the Hyozin, but he keeps tabs on the other groups. That sounds like our best lead so far. And would you happen to know where this guy is? You'll probably find him in that alchemy shop down the alley there. What is that? What? What is that? It's an alchemy shop. I don't know. Oh, okay. You just smiled at me when you said it. Well, because I know how much you like alchemy from, oh. Oh, from okay. Full Metal Alchemist uh, and, and etc. <laughs> I thought you just did that because it... It was something I was supposed oh, to have recognized. I see. No. And I didn't recognize it, so no, I was just, like, wait a minute, what? Just the fact that you enjoy the concept of alchemy. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually the place most of the Hyozin go to get their tattoos done. Not a place you'd normally want to find yourself in. How'd you know all this? This isn't your first time trading down here, is it? He so, said it wasn't. So what if it's not? It's not a crime to trade, is it? No, but being affiliated with the gangs is. You're saying there's some moon folk out there wielding a dangerous weapon, and all you care about is my honest business? He's got a point. Just go and, just go and see this Hyozin fella. He'll know what's up. But be warned, he isn't one to be messed around with, no matter how well trained you are. We'll take your advice under consideration. You bow and hurry away before he can try to sell you anything else. That was like pulling teeth. 
I hope we never have to talk to that guy again. I feel like you said that the last time we saw him <laughs> as well, and yet here we are. Let's just focus on this lead. It sounds I think like we that might means be. We're gonna see him a third time. Exactly. Let's just focus on this lead. It sounds like we might be in for trouble. So, the fighting pits, the Kozue Sake Bar, or the Heyozen Poisoner Shop. Poisoner? Now he's it, a poisoner. That's what it says. Oh boy. Uh You know what? Let's go to the sake bar first. Okay. Because maybe we can buy some sake to uh provide for this gentleman so that he will give us information. Okay. You enter the dim and dingy sake bar. The shady occupants are bathed in the neon glow. Toma tenses bus beside you. Focus on the mission. We can tell Nishi about this later. Or Toma, relax, please. Relax. Your words seem to have the opposite effect. I just can't stand the thought yeah, of criminals. They always have the opposite effect on me when you say them. <laughs> <laughs> ah, ah. Nice. I just can't stand the thought of criminals roaming free. Not everyone has a choice in the Undercity. If it's commit a crime or starve, I know what I'd choose. There's always a choice. You've had a privileged upbringing in the Imperial Courts. Let's not pretend you know what the Undercity is like. Interesting. Yeah, interesting points yeah. of discussion. Toma goes quiet. As you follow the bar further in... A hollow drum illuminates a booth occupied by three people. You freeze. What? That's... Toma grips his naginta tighter and eyes up the crowd. Caro, caro bonito. I have no idea what that means. The man with the yellow hat? <laughs> uh, what? No way! Who? Only one of the most legendary bands to come from abroad. <laughs> How do you know who they are? I didn't take you for someone who has interests. Wow, what? dude. What? What does that even mean? <laughs> <laughs> that means I assume you're like me and have no life. Yeah. You're an Imperial, so you're not allowed to like things. <laughs> How do you know who they are? You decide to ignore Toma. We should go say hi. As, as part of our investigation, I hope. Nothing else. Ray has suddenly started to approach them. Wait, I'm nervous. Get a grip. We're investigating a crime. They may know a lot of influential people. Maybe they'll have a lead for us. Okay. You and Toma go over to the table and introduce yourselves. Good evening. We're here on official Imperial business. We were wondering if we could ask you some questions. <laughs> oh my god. L look at this dude. It's great. <laughs> Gus. Sure thing. Thanks, Gus. I mean, guy. Guy I don't know. <laughs> Your face feels hot. Are you blushing? <laughs> Jamie. I think you have a fan, Gus. The man with the yellow hat here is quite, is quite the fan of yours, for some reason beyond my comprehension. <laughs> you feel cold sweat trickle down your spine. Sarah shoots Toma a suspicious look, but smiles warmly at you. I was like, who's Sarah? But I assume it will be the third member right. of the band that we're about to see now. There she is. Nice to meet you, the man with the yellow hat. What are you three doing here? This place doesn't really look like a celebrity hangout. Jamie sighs. We're hiding from angry fans. We did have a concert tonight, but we've lost our Aunt Boo. Bless you. <laughs> that joke only works the first time I say it. <laughs> it's the first time you said it to them. Jamie looks at Gus disapprovingly. <laughs> Our fans are really excited to hear our new sound. I mean, when was the last time a band invented a whole new sound? But we can't play it without the Ampu. There are like two in existence. 
There's one you can win at the arcade, and there's the one we lost. Oops. Why so few? There's still experimental prototypes. We have a special deal with the company that makes them. I'm thinking, you know, you're an Imperial Samurai and all. Could you possibly help us out? We'd be happy to. <laughs> Toma looks exasperated, of course he does, but says nothing. The good news is that we already won it from the arcade. He said nothing, we're off the hook. <laughs> <laughs> Look, we already have it. We already have what? We won it from the arcade already. Oh, oh, from shit. From the other episode. I didn't realize. You pull out the ompu. The band collectively lets out a gasp. It's useless to us, so here you go. Yeah, if I remember correctly, when we got it, you said this will probably be helpful for us at some point in the future. <laughs> yeah. So, hey, we figured it out. Huh? You actually managed to win it? We kind of thought it was a scam. That's very impressive. Well, uh, that was resolved a lot quicker than we expected. Maybe you'd like to come and watch us play as a thank you. Hell yeah. <clears throat> yeah, you should totally stay. Don't go anywhere. Thank you for your kind, uh, offer, but we have a job to do. The band look at each other. They seem slightly panicked. But you can't leave. What? Uh, well, you just got here. You should stay a little while. Yeah, who goes into a bar and then leaves after a few minutes? Very odd. You should, you know, totally join us for a drink. Oh, well, I'd love to, but we really have to get going. As you and stand, you're playing a, a guitar, so <laughs> it's a little bit ridiculous, not gonna lie. As you stand up to leave, you could swear that Sarah gestured to someone behind you. Uh huh. You turn around, but the other shady patrons nearby stand up and surround you. I bet they do. It's a trap. This could all have been avoided if you just sat down and had a drink with us. Who are you working for? What do you want? Or let us go and we won't hurt you. What do you want? From you guys? Nothing. I mean, clearly you do. <laughs> because otherwise you would let us leave. We just have to keep you busy tonight and we get a whole bunch of other experimental instruments. This new sound could help the band get, a whole, get to a whole other level. We'll never play in the Undercity again. Or, I could trade the instruments for a Platinum Holo Card deck. Listen, I understand Platinum Holo Cards and Holo Tech instruments sound enticing, but our mission is deciding the fate of the world. Honest. I'm sure. You'll be happy to hear our sponsors also want to make the world a better place. They said you're making that very difficult. I bet they did. The thugs begin to advance, their weapons glowing a soft blue. Here we go! As you begin to unsheath your katana, an almighty bang rocks the bar. Is it Ray? Ray just like fired that bazooka thing? <laughs> what was that? Jamie stands up and points through the window. They found us! Hide! Oh, uh, it's groupies. Nice. The room is thrown into chaos as fans begin to pour into the bar and swarm the band. All the shady patrons surrounding you rush towards them, clearing an escape route. Out the back door! Steal some sake! <laughs> you follow Toma out the back entrance and stand panting in a dark alleyway. What just happened? Well, we needed a distraction, so I put their location on a fan forum. <laughs> no fucking way Toma did that. <laughs> oh my god, yes. <laughs> Finally, he's useful. Toma, that's genius. Toma bows. Of course it was. Look at that smile. <laughs> Shame the band tried to kill us. They seem to be connected to the Kindai ninjas. Yeah, I did not see that coming. I guess that's what you get for having interests outside of the Imperial Court. Wow, wow, really gonna use that as the reason for why we're not allowed to have interest Whatever. in Whatever, he's on social media, we know now, so... <laughs> Alright, the fighting pits or the poisoner shop? Poisoner shop. Okay. Hopefully we stole some sake. <clears throat> we did, almost certainly did not. You enter the shop through a rickety side door. 
one that you'd never have spotted had you not been told about it. A, a chime rings out as the door slides shut. Ray grips their sword tighter. This is an evil place. Asuga whips her tongue out and sniffs at the air. Foul abominations happen here. There are... You think everything's an abomination. <laughs> there are dark kami all around, hiding in insidious shadows. That's kind of cool, actually. <laughs> I don't like this. Let's be on guard. Do you like anything? Or, I don't know, this place seems homely. <laughs> Let's be on guard. <laughs> Damn, you don't pick the fun answer. That's fine. There's not much room here if we end up in a fight. Then let's try and prevent that, eh? Just then, a holographic curtain dissipates and a spindly woman walks in. Her mouth appears to have been sewn shut. Oh, shit. What the? She looks you over, blinks slowly, and then gestures for you to follow her. Nah. Nah, I'm good. She goes... She goes back behind the holographic curtain without checking to see if you're following her. Remember, this is a Hyozen location. Expect anything to be down there. All right, I guess we're following her. Why? You go into the back room of the shop and are immediately hit by wisps of thick, spiced smoke. No. Nope. It's a head shop. Like it. Whoa. A mountain of a man wearing a specialized mask and covered in intricate tattoos stands with his back to you. The woman goes in front of him, picks up a wand-like instrument that's covered in delicate needles, and starts to poke them into the man's flesh. Oh, jeez. Is it a tattoo bar or whatever? As she does this, the man's tattoos begin to writhe and come alive. Ethereal demons, weaponry, and all manner of foul things dance around the man, bound to his skin. Ew. It's like uh. the it's like the living ink and stuff that, yeah. that we've seen in the set. No. What is this? The man bows his head. Welcome, I'm Junichiro. To what do I owe this visit? Bow in return, explain what's going on to Toma, or compliment the mask. Bow and return. You lower yourself in a formal bow, and Toma follows suit. You hear Junichiro chuckle. So I see the Imperials still drill matters into their pups. Wow. That's a compliment. You think so? Uh, it's about as close as we're going to get to one, I have a feeling. So we'll take what we can get, yeah. you're saying? Yeah. All right, fair enough. <laughs> oh, smoke coming out of the mask. As it should be. You were an Imperial? Why are we even here? Or say pup one more time. <laughs> you were an Imperial? Junichiro chuckles some more. It, it rings out hollow from his mask. You'll find a lot of Reckoners down here were once loyal dogs of the Imperial Court. Wow. I guess that's a yes then. It's true. When Imperials come to see just how unjust their cause really is, they either join us or the Reckoner gangs. The fools that leave are weak, leaving us all the stronger for it. I really look forward to the day you join the Hisaku ranks, Toma. He spits at Ray's feet in response. Wow. That's real rude. God damn. Only traitors and scum desert. And I guess you should. You would say I'm both. I assure you, I only turned traitor on those that deserved it. Like your precious emperor. Oh, shit. Yikes. Wow. Junichiro's shoulder jerks suddenly. Toma readies his guard instinctively, but Junichiro raises his hand. Uh, apologies. Sometimes these tattoo sessions can be a little feisty. You see curls of black smoke worm across his shoulder. The spindly woman deftly snatches them up with her needle and jabs them back into Junichiro's skin. Whoa. Gross. Asuga hisses. 
This is wrong. It's unnatural. Ah, so you do belong to the Order of Hanami. I thought I could detect the unmistakable prideful ignorance. You know nothing of my people or our cause. Oh, but that's just not true. It's my business to know everyone's business. Now tell me, Hanami. No one can know everyone's business. <laughs> just how exactly is this unnatural? These kami are merely being bound to me through different means to our own. To your own. They're still from Kakuryo. You just can't abide them because they represent concepts your order doesn't like reflected back in their face. Wow. Wow. That's uh this guy's probably like, pretty insightful to be perfectly honest. I was gonna say, this guy's like slamming everybody and look at Asuga's face. That's not true. The world isn't just tree bark and hot springs. There's death, decay, greed, and corruption. All things that keep our world in check. But I've never been able to get through to you people before, so why bother trying to make you see sense? He turns back to you. Now tell me, why is it you sought me out? We're hunting down two Kindai futurist ninjas. Ah, the, uh, the usual nonsense then. May I ask why? They've captured a dangerous kami. They're holding on to dangerous tech or no. Hmm. Hmm. I don't know. What do you mean? Why don't you know? I don't want to say no, because we want to find out more. Okay. They're holding on to dangerous tech. Okay. They've captured a dangerous kami. I feel like that one's not going to work either because it's pretty clear that these people like capturing dangerous kami. Okay. So I think we say dangerous tech. Ha! The Kindai hoarding dangerous tech? What's new? He sighs. The older you get, the more you realize that nothing changes. I look forward to the day you help the younger generation with this exact problem too. Are you going to help us or not? Such impertinence. I don't like you, Samurai. Huh, few people who have met him do. You're too rash and hot-headed. You must have a rich family to get to your position. I doubt your personality and ability speaks for themselves. Oh, shit. Ugh, how dare! Toma, enough! Yes, you. You I like. You're smarter than your friend. That's Tom true. Toma means well, someone has to be, or better looking, too. Better looking. I hope I didn't somehow insult this guy. Forgive me for my silence, I've just never met an Imperial with a sense of humor. No matter how bad it is. Rude. I thought that was funny. He turns, <laughs> he turns back to Toma, who's gritting his teeth. If you speak one more time... I will have you and your friends killed. Uh... <laughs> yeah, Toma. If Toma speaks again, he's going to try but, to kill us all. But Or have someone kill us all. Because he doesn't like Toma. He likes us. So he only wants to talk to us, essentially. But It's like a hostage negotiator, right? The the Or a hostage taker, I guess I should say. The hostage taker is like, I don't like you. You're not talking anymore. Somebody else talks to me now. We're doomed. Toma's eyes widen and he immediately goes to shout at Junichiro. Oh. Don't test me. Toma scowls but steps back. Junichiro turns to you. You I will talk to. He exhales slowly. More wisps of purple smoke escape his mask. I've heard some strange reports from my spies in Yuruma territory. It looks They're... like pink smoke to me. Yeah, it does. They're apparently harboring two well-equipped outsiders. From the descriptions, I can only assume these are Kindai ninjas. Nice. They're carrying a strange device, too. It's all quite fascinating. That's them? Where are they? Or we need more to go on. 
Um, we need more to go on? Yeah. I Sorry. feel like it's too pigeonhole -y to try and say that's them or... Where are they? Where are they? Of course you do. Nothing in this world is free, especially sensitive information such as where these ninjas are hiding out. What is it that you want? Junichiro breathes in and then breathes out for you to agree to be in my debt. That sounds like a bad idea. What kind of deal is that? You could ask for anything. Yes. Toma goes to speak again, but you stop him. <clears throat> All right, I'll do it. I agree to be in your debt. Oh, shit. Good. They didn't ask us because they knew we wouldn't say yes. <laughs> know that I can and will come to you in the future and ask for a favor. Only then will you be free of your debt. You swallow hard. Maybe this wasn't such a good idea. Yeah, no shit. Okay, you've got your deal. Now where are the Yoruma? Junichiro starts to laugh again. Slowly at first, but then, but it then begins to change into a terrible cackle. The spindly woman stops her intricate work and scurries out the room. What's going on? He's about to kill you. The purple gas begins to pour out of Junichiro's mask and flows to the floor like a waterfall. That music is getting real loud. Gas! It's a knockout toxin. He set us up! Run! But it's too late. Your limbs grow heavy, and it feels like there are needles creeping up your spine, shutting down every nerve. No! You collapse to the floor, and darkness begins to cloud your vision. All the while, Junichiro's hideous laugh reverberates around your head. The man with the yellow hat! <laughs> You're snapped to your senses in a sudden rush. Still love that. It's hilarious. Hmm. The world around you spins. What happened? You're aware that you're slumped on the floor, sitting bow-legged with your head down. We were drugged by Junichiro. Thomas spits. He's given us over to the Yoruma. You feel it then. The cord tying your hands behind your back. Around you, the room slowly comes into focus. A small, dank storage area of some kind, dimly lit by purple lights. You look over at, the, at your team. Ray's head lulls from side to side as they try to focus on the door. Are you with us, Ray? I'm groggy, but it's no different. Too much ale. Wow. They giggle as their head falls forward. Oh, uh, no. Next, you spot Asuga, whose body lies sprawled out in a twisted line. One of her serpentine eyes focuses on you as you stare at her. Are you all right, Asuga? My mind is here, but my body is not. You focus your attention on Toma, who sat opposite you. You don't seem as affected by the gas. I've had my resistance to such gases built up over the years. Why wasn't I given that training? That sounds awful, or you're just full of surprises. <laughs> Why wasn't I given that training? You will be eventually. If we can make it out of this alive. Yeah. The door to the room opens and several masked figures enter. Your room a leader. Ah, you're awake. Good. The woman turns to one of her fellow Yoruma. Looks like Junichiro didn't use too much gas. After all, the man nods. We had a little bet going. The hoisin can be a little... Overzealous with their poisons at times. But Shit. I knew you were too valuable as captives for Junichiro to make such a mistake. Cowards! Untie us immediately, or... Or what? You're the one tied up here, Imperial. Toma grunts as he tries to break out of his bindings. No, 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 we can't have that. The woman taps at her wrist guard. Ooh. Oh, it's loud. Toma's cord suddenly glows a bright purple and crackles with energy. Ugh! He cries in agony as curls of black smoke come from his wrists. Oh. Yeah, it like burned him. What are you doing to him? Stop that or you're a bunch of cowards. Stop that. Why should I? You say nothing. That's what I thought. 
She taps at her wrist guard again. The cords around Toma's wrists stop glowing. Toma slumps forward. You can tell he's on the verge of passing out. Let that be a warning. Talk back to me or try anything stupid, and next time, I won't turn it off. Just try it. You'll see what I'm made of. Your threat means... Or your threats mean nothing. You won't get away with this. That sounds like talking back. She goes to activate your bindings. Wait! I'm sorry. That's more like it. <laughs> Why are we here? Junichiro told us you were looking for us. He was even kind enough to deliver you here. Now why is that? We're looking for Kindai Futurists. If you know we were if you know we were looking for you, then you know why. Or why don't you untie me and I'll tell you. Uh why don't you untie me and I'll tell you? She tuts. You just can't control that mouth of yours, can you? She taps her wrist guard, and the world explodes into a purple haze of pain. Ah, oh, shit. Your Maybe wrists... that was the wrong choice. Yep, your wrists fizzle under an intense cold that burns like fire. It doesn't take you long before you cry out for the woman to turn off the cords around your wrists. She does so. Let me make one thing clear. I already know why you're here. I like my captives to be honest folk, so let's get everything here straightened out. Are we harboring these Kindai? Yes. Congratulations. You found them. You must hand them over immediately. Must we? Why? They're wanted by the Imperial Court, they carry something extremely dangerous, or because you'll die if you don't. <sighs> um... So it's one of the last two. Okay. Um, I'm, I'm afraid to say you'll die if you don't, because that could just sound like a threat. Yep. Uh, so I'll say they, they're carrying something extremely dangerous. The woman raises an eyebrow. Don't we all? The Kindai have captured a powerful kami. You must allow us to apprehend them and retrieve it. They've what? She turns to her companions. Do you think that's what that's what's in that case? The man shrugs. How is that such a thing even possible? We don't know. It's another reason we have to take custody of those ninjas. Or these ninjas. Suppose we do help you. What do we get in return? You criminals, always wanting to be paid. This sake that we stole from yeah, the Yeah, that we definitely restaurant. didn't take at all. Is it really any different to you Imperials, sucking territories under your cult control, dry... She's got you there. What do you want? The Kindai promised some powerful new technology for keeping them safe. What can you offer instead? Money, lots of it, imperial pardons, or your lives. I've already spent so much money in this game, <laughs> and I don't actually know that we have a lot of money. Right. Um, I made that assumption, but I don't actually know it. Mm-hmm. I don't want to offer them pardons because that's going to suck. And I don't want to say your lives because then they're just going to try and kill us. Right. Well, because again, there's two ways of looking at your lives. The one that I am almost certain it is, is us being like, you know, your lives, in other words, otherwise we'll kill you. Right. But you could also arguably say, you know, your lives, meaning if you help us, we can stop them and then it won't destroy the world. Right. And so you'll live or you won't die. But yeah, but, but yeah it's almost certainly the first Since they're not explaining it at all, yeah. I feel like it can be taken as a threat. No, so. it, 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 I think it is a threat is what I'm saying. Yeah, so. yeah. All right, so let's say... Ugh. Let's say money. An imperial ransom's worth. The leader thinks this over. <clears throat> hmm. But all I would do with money is buy the same tech I want from the Kindai. All I'm doing is adding more steps for myself. No, I don't think you can offer me anything we don't already have. 
She laughs. Except your skills as fighters. What? Look, I'm a gambling woman. I've had an idea. It's risky, but that's when life is its most fun. I'm going to remove your bindings. You'll then have a chance to kill or capture these kindai. If you do, then you can keep the kami and leave here. Huh. If they kill you, however, then we can finish them off and bargain the kami back to the rest of the future as kindai futurists. Well, I guess we won't care at that point because <clears throat> we'll be dead. That plan <laughs> is deeply flawed. I disagree. <laughs> Shh. All right, we'll do it. Untie us. As I said, this is a risk, but I think it'll pay off. Give them the stimulant. The two other Yoruma approach and inject you with something. Soon the lingering brain fog dissipates and you feel your limbs return to your command. Finally, I can speak properly again. I was enjoying the quiet while it lasted. <laughs> Asuga immediately coils herself into a spring and stands up. I never want to feel like that again. Right, now that you're recovered, follow me. Before you can move, three small drones fly in the room. Each one ejects a thin wire hoop that encircles the necks of the Yoruma that tighten upon contact. Uh... The gangsters scrabble at their necks, scratching gashes into their flesh in a desperate attempt to get under the wire. Oh, shit. Good lord! The wires simply go tighter. What's happening? The kindai, or we must save them. We must save them? It's too late for them. We must free ourselves from these cords. As the Yoruma slowly collapse and stop moving, the two Kindai ninjas enter the room. Wow. We found them. You'd think these gangsters would be more subtle when it comes to betrayal. They were so loud, I'm sure even Kyodai could hear them. The two walk past the now dead Yoruma and over to you. I understand that you've been looking for us. Well, good work in finding us. Too bad it will now lead to your demise. Just give us the kami and this will be over? If you think we're gonna, you're gonna get away, you're wrong. Or, what are you even doing with that kami? Um, what are you even doing with that kami? Do you think I even know? Do you, a simple foot soldier, know all the intentions of your higher-ups? I was just sent to catch it. The ninjas Gotta each catch them all. Yes. The ninjas each pull out a small cube and press on two sides. It soon unfolds into a tanto. I promise to make this quick. You feel a tugging at your consciousness. An otherworldly power starts to pull the strings. Oh shit. My Kami! The energy flows through you. A feeling of lightness comes over you, of shedding a heavy coat or opening a jammed door. The bindings around everyone's wrists come undone and fall to the ground. We're free! Ah, an inconvenience, but nothing more. The two ninjas position themselves into a battle stance. Charge straight at them, use your Kami to subdue them, or order Rei and Asuga to charge in. Um... Digging this music, so take your time. Yeah. <laughs> so good. I get. Oh, God. Ray and Asuga? Okay. Asuga! Ray! Get in there! With pleasure! It's time to avenge the Kami. Ray begins to charge up their blaster while Asuga slithers up to the closest ninja and engages them with her four Sai. The two figures dance and twirl around one another in a blur of blades and limbs. Eventually, the ninja backflips away and unveils a wrist crossbow. Then, there's a loud bang, a blinding flash of light, and a fireball erupts and engulfs them. Oh, jeez. Oh, I miss the sweet music my blaster makes. Did you 
Say something. I can't hear anything. <laughs> <laughs> the ninja lies prone on the floor, slightly smoldering. Nice. Nicely done. That's one. The second... Jesus. The second backflips away from you and triggers their tanto to unfold further into a full-sized katana. That's cheating. So is this. Several automated shurikens fly from the ninja's robes. Of course. You manage to dodge I the one... see robes. It's just armor. Yeah. You manage to dodge the one heading for you, but the other three hit their targets, bringing Rei, Asuga, and Toma down. One-on-one. -on -one. Oh, I can't move again. It's another toxin. Yeah, no shit. <laughs> We only just got free of the last one. Toxin, please, as if we're that unsophisticated. Those shurikens are hitting you with an electrical pulse that's slowing down your nervous system. Oh, shit. It's far more civilized. You square off against the ninja. You can't defeat me. Put away your weapon and let me walk out of here. You see your allies squirm and twitch around you. I can't let you leave. You underestimate me. Or do all Kendai talk so much? Wow. All of those options suck. I mean, we can't let them leave, so... <laughs> yeah, but there's nothing we can do about it. I mean, <laughs> like... it, the you underestimate me makes me think that we're going to actually attempt to put up a fight against this this person. Alright, well, sure. But that doesn't mean we have to pick that option. I'm just saying, like, because that's one of the options I that... can't let you leave. Okay. They sigh. Then you must die. They level their katana at you. You do the same. In the blink of an eye, the two of you are bounding towards one another. They bring their katana down, but you meet it on the edge of yours. You kick them, but they backflip away from your blow. You're stuck in a duel of skill where the smallest slip-up will bring your death. Yeah, this sounds like a shit storm. <laughs> I need to do something. Throw your katana at them, use your kami powers, or parry until they get tired. Oh, God. Parrying repeatedly is just going to make us tired as well. Yes, and we run the risk of missing or messing up sooner. Uh, is our Kami still kind of fucked up because of what happened before? I don't think so. Okay. I mean, they, they didn't give us any indication of that. Alright, let's try the Kami thing. I agree. I think that makes sense. You start to control your breathing and try to summon your Kami's strength. The ninja takes this opportunity to close the distance with you and swings their katana, causing you to jump backwards. You trip over something and fall hard to the floor. You land next to Toma, who grimaces at you. The man with the yellow hat! The ninja dashes towards you. <laughs> God damn it. We know that like our Kami has to be nicknamed... George, right? <laughs> you see the shuriken embedded in Toma's neck. Going on instinct, you pluck it from his flesh, feeling it sting your fingertips, then hurl it at the ninja. Nice, okay. Smart, smart. It, it lands on target, embedding itself under their armpit. Huh! The ninja goes rigid for a moment and then collapses to the ground. No! Toma slowly begins to sit up. Quick, let's look for the Kami container. Ugh! He falls back down. Stay here. I'll find the container. Why does it take this person down, like, instantly, yet Toma's still kind of fine, even though it was, like, in his neck for a while? He built up, you know, a resistance to oh, it over the years, okay. he said. I gotcha, I gotcha. At least that was to the other thing, I suppose. It might not be this as well. It takes a while. The ninjas hid the Kami well, but eventually, you come across it. Returning to the room, you find Toma has tied up Rei, Asuga, and the ninja. Shit. What are you doing? It's for security. Are you saying we can't trust them? That's exactly what I'm saying. Come, you've got the container. Let's get out of here. Wait, the man with the yellow hat. I've been by your side for a while now. I know what kind of person you are. Come back with me and join the Hisaku Uprisers. 
You're more suited for it than the Imperial Court. Bring the Kami with you and we'll free it together. Quiet. Don't listen to them, the man with the yellow hat. Let's go. No. Open the container now, the man with the yellow hat. You've seen the corruption of these factions, of the places we've been. Free the Kami here. Let its wrath cleanse Tawashi and earn us our place back amongst them. Oh my god. Shut it, scum. We can't waste time on such nonsense. Opening that container would kill us and half the city. You could always return it to me and let me take it back to Otawara. Do you really think we do something so stupid? Stop letting your Imperial Masters hold back essential progress. You have no idea what we could accomplish with that Kami. Neither do you. I know it'd be put to better use th by us than the Imperials. You'll simply lock it away and forget about it. Thomas slaps the ninja hard. Oh, shit. Rude. That's it. I have no patience for this. Toma raises up his Naginta. <whistles> Just gonna murder this person? Well, we've been, like, forcing him to keep it pent up, I guess. And so, so here's the question, Amy. Whose side should I take? What should I do with the Kami? Okay. Do we take it back to the Imperials with Toma? Do we incapacitate Toma and join the Kindai? Do we side with Rei and join the Hisaku? Or do we agree with Asuga and unleash the Kami? Wow. Oh my god. Hell this, yeah. This is seriously something you're making me decide right now? Hell yeah. No. None of these even make sense. Like, I just want to <laughs> untie Asuga and Ray, and then, like, incapacitate Toma, take the Kami with us, and then keep doing what we were doing. This is what we were doing. No, I know, but we were taking, we were trying to get the Kami. Yeah. So now we just have to go back to the person that sent us on this mission in the first place. Um, uh, Nashi? Is that who it was? Something like that. The, like, rat lady. Which is an Imperial. Yeah. So I kind of want to do all of these. I want to take the Kami back to the Imperials. Okay. I want to incapacitate Toma. Because he tied up everybody? I want to untie Ray. And I want to untie Asuga. Mm -hmm. But I don't want to join the Hisaku. Right. Or the Kindai. Right. And I don't want to abandon the Imper Imperials. I don't necessarily want to abandon Toma, but I might. Right. And then... I'm not going to unleash the Kami. So, like, none of these really make sense. None of them are really quite right. Yep. Sounds about right. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah, see what I want to do is incapacitate Toma and this woman, the Kindai woman. She is already incapacitated because oh. she's got the, the, the shuriken or whatever. Okay. Her. But, yeah, I might try to, like, fi I would probably try to figure out a way to, like, transport the two of them with us, even though they're incapacitated. Mm. And then also get Rey and Asuga, and all of us then take the Kami back to the Imperials. Right. And, I, by the way, I misspoke. It's, uh, we know the Shuriken's under her armpit, but still, that's right. semantics. Okay. If that's what I would do if I could. Sure. Yeah, and I think in, in these types of situations, it's good to say that, to be like, hey, you know, this would have been a cool option. Like, why are these the only choices? They're not great. Right. But now we've got to pick one just to see how the story advances. So, which would you like it to be? I think it's gotta be Ray. Yeah, I agree. 
It can't be a Suga because we're not unleashing the Kami. I'd be curious to see what that would be. Cause it's possible that like, because we're unleashing it or because a Suga like has such reverence for the Kami or whatever, it's possible that unleashing it doesn't do anything harmful because the Kami is grateful, but we don't know that. So right. I agree that we shouldn't do it. But, um, and yeah, so because of that, I think the the best option out of these four is to side with Rey and join the Hisaku. Yeah, I think I have to. Yeah. Because I can't just go back to the Imperials with it with Toma. Right. I mean, he tied up the other two. And they'll stay here if you do that, yeah, it seems like. Yeah, and they'll yeah. probably get killed. Yeah, and joining the Kindai makes absolutely no sense to me, personally. Like, no. what, you know. Just what's the purpose of... After all of this work that we've done, we're just now going to turn around and join them? Like, Yeah, it doesn't make sense. Yeah, so, okay. Let's see what happens. As Toma brings the blade of his Naginta down onto the ninja, you step towards Rey and undo their bindings. Oh, so you let... So the ninja just dies now. Oh. Because he, he brings his Naginta down onto the ninja, and that's it. You move to Rey and don't move to stop the Naginta. Right, let's get back. What are you doing? I'm sorry, Toma, but my destiny lies down a different path. Traitor! He levels his Naginta at you, but before he can thrust, Ray smashes a nearby crate over his head. He falls to the floor. I've been wanting to do that ever since we started on this journey. Come, let's leave here before he wakes up. Ray goes to undo Asuga's bindings. I must warn you. If you free me, I'll have to fight you for control over the container. Oh, I guess I won't release you then. <laughs> Jesus. Asuga hisses. I just want to make you aware of the situation you found yourself in. You and Ray make your way out of the Undercity, leaving Asuga tied up and Toma unconscious, and start on the journey back to Sokenzenshi. The journey isn't difficult, as the Imperials still believe you're working for them, and you manage to misdirect any patrols you come across. Wow, okay. Eventually you arrive back and are greeted by a delighted Rangi, or Renge? I don't remember how I pronounced that, or how it's actually supposed to be pronounced, <laughs> if they're not the same. She eagerly takes the Kami from you and promises to return it to the merge, just as soon as they figure out how to do that. Over the coming months, you take on more and more responsibility within the Hasaku Uprisers as Rei's trusted second. Nice. Bounties are put on your head and you're unable to ever return to the Imperial Court. Wow. But you find life amongst the Hisaku to be far more filled with camaraderie and respect than you've ever known before. Within the Hisaku, people earn their positions of power and can't just simply buy them or inherit them from influential parents. You and Rey conduct many raids against Imperial supply lines. At times you can't help but feel guilt, though you know your cause is just. It's on one such raid that you come across Toma. Hate fills his eyes, and the battle between the two of you is long and bloody. Wow. Eventually, both of you fall to one another's blade. Jesus Christ. Ray takes you all the way back to the Hisaku lines on their shoulder. Before going into surgery, you ask whatever happened to the Kami. In the midst of your new life, it slipped to the back of your mind. Ray simply smiles and tells you not to worry. It's all for the cause. Just focus on healing. Oh boy. And then there's nothing more but darkness. Wow. So we just die. Yeah. Seems that way. Oh, shit. I have to say, this game is interesting to me for a couple of reasons. And I want your take on this as well. Maybe I should get your take on it first before I give my thoughts. What okay. did you think of the game? Because, by the way, it says, thank you for I playing. Continue your coming so out of injury. Cool. Yeah. And, like, really made sense for most of it until this end part where I thought these four options just sucked. And now in the end, we just die? Like, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm confused. This 
it didn't go right. <laughs> okay. I feel like up until that point, we were doing pretty well. Well, let's, uh, let's go back then. It's possible to go back. Let's go back and choose a different option. What do you think? Oh, like show each different option what yeah, happens? Yeah, sure, why not? Okay, let's do that. So, spoilers, everybody. If you don't want to see all the options, uh, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and ring the bell, etc. Uh, and we'll see you in, in the next video. But, uh, yeah, okay. So, we have already sided with Rey and joined the Hisaku. Do you want to take it back to the Imperials with Toma, incapacitate Toma and join the Kindai, or agree with Asuga and unleash the Kami? Let's do Imperials next. Okay. Toma brings the edge of the Naginta down. So this is, I guess, again, still going to happen. Yeah. In fact, this probably happens in every one of these except the one where you join the Kindai. The ninja is silenced. Are you ready to leave? Yes. He nods at Asuga and Rei and readies his Naginta. He's just going to murder them oh right here. Oh my god. And them? Le oh, okay, we get to choose. Leave them here, kill them, or bring them with us. Bring them with us. God. Good. This is actually a decent option so far. Yeah. You want them for interrogation? Asuga, yes. Rey will make a good bargaining chip with the Hisaku. Smart thinking. I can't believe you'd do this, the man with the yellow hat. I thought you were different. You're an Imperial through and through. I regret helping you. Wow. Damn, I like the Suga, man. I, I mean, I still do, of course, but that sucks. With Rey and Asuga taken care of, you make your way back to the Imperial Court. You're greeted by Nishi. Nishi, not Nashi. Sorry, I said it wrong earlier. And a full... You're pretty close, though, Thank for, you. you know, trying to remember the name. Just... From four weeks ago. <laughs> <laughs> You're greeted by Nishi and a full detachment of scientists and Kami handlers. The container is quickly whisked away from your hands and taken somewhere deep within the Imperial Palace, never to be seen by you again. You and Toma receive little official recognition for your deeds, no awards or ceremonies, as if what you did never happened. As time goes by, even you start to forget it ever did. Instead, you focus on your day-to-day -day duties. Occasionally, as you put down an uprising here, protect a regional governor there, you think back to the mission. You wonder, what have you really achieved? You never speak those thoughts out loud, though. To do so would endanger both you and Toma. Wow. And that's it. Wow. That's like a kind of a lamer ending. At least, like, something happened with, um, with the Ray one. Yeah, but what happened was outlandish. Sure. All right, uh, do we incapacitate Toma and join the Kindai, or agree with Asuga and unleash the Kami? I think Kindai next, and then Kami See the Asuga last, one last, because sure. that one's just going to be, like, apocalyptic. Sure. All right, before Toma can bring his Naginta down, you step towards him and smack the hilt of your katana into the base of his skull. Oh, Jesus. Jesus. Huh. <sighs> he drops to his knees. The men in the yellow hat! He then slumps forward and lands face first onto the floor. I assume this means you'll be joining us? You assume correctly. What are you doing? You can't allow the Kindai to keep the Kami. What was all this for? I don't have to explain myself. Wow, shit. Out of all the people I thought you'd side with, the Kindai were the last on my list. I'd say I'm angry, but I almost respect your ability to double-cross us like this. Wow. <laughs> Ray is awesome. Yeah, Ray was definitely the right choice. So far, at least. You hand the Kami to the ninja and make your way with them to Otawara. The journey isn't difficult. The Imperials still believe you're working for them and you manage to misdirect any patrols you come across, like with Ray. Once you reach the Kindai Futurist's capital, the ninja, whose name you never learned and whose face you never saw, disappears with the kami. Yeah, that sounds right. You're left alone to wander the streets of the city that was once your shadow enemy. 
Then you're picked up by some Kindai samurai who take you to an interrogation cell. After months of questioning, you're finally accepted as a new Kindai initiate. You join the ranks with the other samurai and take on a role that's remarkably similar to your old one. Soon it feels like you never left your old life behind. The only thing that gives it away is the abundance of sparkling new tech. Wow. You never learn what the Kindai used the kami for. It's several levels above you. Sometimes at night, you lie wondering if you made the right decision. But then your sleep pod kicks in with its sedation drugs, and all thoughts are wiped from your mind. Whoa. Wow. Wow. Okay. That's so fucked. Yeah, it really is. Okay. Uh, well, let's go ahead and unleash this kami, shall we? Yeah. I'm excited. I'm curious. Yeah, I mean, these have been kind of intense. Because this was going to be my second choice. The Ray one, if it was me, the Ray one was my first choice. The Asuga one was my second choice. Yeah. All right, let's see it. Okay. Because I like Asuga a lot. I was too afraid of the Asuga one. <laughs> no fear. As Toma brings the blade of his Naginta down onto the ninja, you unclasp the container and bypass its locks. Toma turns at the last moment. Don't! There's a sudden silence, as if something is sucking all sound from the space around you. Then, a blinding, brilliant light as the kami flees from its prison. It's impossible to make out fully. In one instant, it's a giant bird, then a wheel made of goat eyes, then a suspended river of blood. Whoa. Jesus, none of those are even similar. The constant or changes. things I want to see. <laughs> the Especially the, the bird. Yes, of course. <laughs> Check out video games for all folks. Link down in the description box below <laughs> to see uh, why Amy hates birds or how Amy hates birds. The constant changes to its form makes your head spin. You look around the room and can see the others' faces of awe and terror. Toma kneels toward the kami, crying tears of gold and diamonds. What? I guess that's the effect of the kami. Yeah. That's so cool. Asuga's mouth hangs open and unhinged, as if it were about to swallow someone whole. Her hands reach out to the kami, but the closer they get, the more they melt into pools of copper. Whoa. Ray is desperately trying to back themselves against the far wall. A terrible smile writhes across their face like the Joker. Wisps of smoke and flecks of fire spread from their armor, swirling into concentric patterns. The corpse of the ninja stands itself upright, turns to the kami, and then explodes into fragments of amethyst which rain down on you. You look back at the kami, which is now in the form of a multi-legged bear, and realize that this is the end. You understand, though not sure how, that you've unleashed death and destruction of an unimaginable sort onto Tawashi. It will be contained, but not before tens of thousands have died by your hand. Wow. That is awesome. But you won't be around to witness it much longer. You look down and see your flesh turning to bronze. When they find you, you'll be a statue, a testament to your deeds. You'll be immovable, indestructible. The reconstruction of Tawashi will have to be built around you. A terrible coldness takes over you as your heart grows still, but your thoughts remain. You look out of the unmovable bronze eyes to the chaos you've created and to the people you've hurt. This is the Kami's reward to you for its freedom. Immortalization of a terrible kind. <laughs> wow, what the fuck? Awesome, that's the best one. Jesus. That is the best no. one. <laughs> All of this is terrible. <laughs> so, okay. So, you were kind of getting to it, but... Yes, all four of those options were not great, right? Like, none of these... Right. All of them were awful. Yeah. So, what were your thoughts of the game as a whole, though? The game as a whole was wonderful. I mean, yeah, like I said, it it made sense. It was cool. 
we had collaborations with people who were very different from us. And, yeah. And even with Toma, who we were arguably similar to, yeah. but not so much. Um, you know, and then we were working together. I thought we were a good team. Yeah. Uh, you know, we argued a little bit, but I think we were a good team. And then it was like all of a sudden when we got to close enough to the finish line. Yeah. It was like all hell broke loose. <laughs> and no matter what we did, there was no fixing it. So here's something that I didn't like about this game. And this is like, we have played games similar to this before, again, over on Video Games for All. That's not necessarily a plug, it's just to let people know. Like we've played through um, Life is Strange, mm -hmm. Dream Daddy, and others that are like this, where you make you you go through and it's basically just text. You're reading the text. Maybe occasionally you play a, a mini game or something like that. Um, but otherwise, you're just making choices, like right. branching choices, and those choices that you make affect how the rest of the game gets played. Right. I don't know because we didn't go back and choose other options, unlike this here at the ending. But. I have a very strong suspicion, and if people have played this game, I would love it if you would tell me in the comments below, especially if I'm wrong, but if you know if I'm right or wrong. But my suspicion is that the choices that we had leading up to this final choice, mm -hmm. any other choice in the game leading up to this final choice would not have resulted in anything different happening to us okay. in any capacity. Okay. I, I just don't. Like, when we, when you, like, snarked earlier when we were bound mm -hmm. and they pressed the button and, and burned our wrists, right. if we had chosen one of the other options, we would have gotten to the same result. They just wouldn't have burned our wrists beforehand. Right. You know what I mean? Like, that's what I get out of it. And that's not a great um, visual novel type of a game, yeah. in my opinion. Yeah. If that's what you're doing. Because all it does is it means that the only choice that was consequential was this final choice. Right. Where it actually did four branching paths. And that's if I'm correct. But that's the vibe I got from this game. And so I don't love that as much personally, where it's just, hey, look, the game is on rails. Play the game all the way through, which isn't a game. You're just reading with like, you know, you're just like reading a comic book, essentially. Um, with like sounds and, and stuff attached to it and music, which again, you've mentioned a million times and I'll say it again for folks who have not heard us say it. The music in this game was amazing. Yeah. Really, really awesome. The sound effects I could kind of take or leave. I think they were fine, but like, you know, it yeah. like kind of went I mean, along were, with what there was going on. There were a ton of them. There were not. Yeah. There were not. Um, it was mostly just the music. Yeah. The, the sound effects went along with what was going on, but like if I didn't have them, I don't think I would have felt like I would have was I robbed have of any experience. Yeah. But the music was incredible. Super yeah. good. I just, I don't love games like that where your choices don't actually matter. Yeah. Right? So typically in games like this, there's like a friendship mechanic of some kind where like, depending on the responses that you give to people, they like you more or less. Mm -hmm. So like for this type of a game, it could have been that like, if you were shitty to Asuga the whole time, mm -hmm. that the Asuga option wouldn't have been there. Right. at the end you know what I mean like right. it would have been like grayed out so that at least it would incentivize you hey if you play this game again and you're nicer to Asuga maybe you'll get this option right. and you can see what that's like or same thing but with well, Ray and so know? that's why I said uh, you know I was like well the whole time we were basically like telling Toma that he couldn't do what he wanted to do. Yeah. And then finally, he like went behind our backs and tied up the two people that we were working with. Yeah. It would be quite impactful, I think, mm -hmm. if it was the sort of thing where we were letting him get away with a lot of shit throughout playing the game. Yeah. And then in the end, he didn't tie them up because he didn't have the desire to do that because we weren't like repressing his ability to 
do anything. Yeah. The it, entirety of the rest of the game. Yeah. It's, it's like, very, very unlikely that we'll be playing this game over on Video Games for All, so I don't really mind talking about this here. Um, it reminds me a lot of the, like, towards the end of Mass Effect 1, where I'm not going to remember the name of the race or the character, but the, the, like, big burly guy who's on your team, who's, like, he gets really angry and basically threatens to, like, leave your group or, like, attack you or something. And throughout the course of the game, as you're building up your skills... If you build up your um, kind of diplomacy skill high enough, then you're actually able to talk him down from abandoning yeah. you and or attacking you. And so he stays on your team for the end of the game. If you have not built that up along the way in the course of the game up to that point, you can't, convince, you can't him. convince him. And either you can be kind of crappy to him and then he probably fights you, right. or you can be neutral to him and just do the default answer and then he just leaves. And right. so you lose that party member that you've been working with all this time, one way or another. Right. And you have to have built up that diplomacy high enough. So yes, similar to what you're saying with Toma, like that you could have actually like gained his trust in some capacity where right. he wouldn't be shitty at the end right. there, you know? So yeah, I, I think that this was cool and I want to encourage the like magic team that was in charge of this game to do stuff like this in the future. Yes. But I would like Absolutely. for it, but I would like for it to be something that gets a little bit more work put into it. Now this was a free game on steam. So, and I think like, again, the experience was cool. The music was cool. I don't know that I would love to. The have, art was amazing. Yes. Yes, definitely. Sorry. Thank you. Yeah. Um, I don't know how much money I would have been willing to pay for this game. Like, personally, probably not more than, like, five bucks. Well, in hindsight, probably yes. not more than five bucks. Yes. But, you know, going in, maybe Shh. we would have paid a little bit more, sure. not realizing that the game was a little bit linear. Yeah, like, it's not so much a game. Yeah, I mean, again, cool experience. Don't, don't get me wrong. But... I would say, I mean, I would be willing to pay an amount of money for this type of an experience in the future as well. I would. Like I said, not crazy amounts. And that's that's partially how I like am catering the experience that I had. And yeah. partially because I'm aware of our current financial situation. And yeah. so like, you know, I'm not going to be like, yeah, 50 bucks I'd pay for this game. No, no definitely not. not. But like, I don't know. I, I hope that nobody finds me saying five dollars as something that's insulting because i don't mean it to be insulting i'm just saying like the fact that it was not much of a game right it was like an experience right no question but it, well and i think that was the point yes absolutely um but yeah so that's what i'm working with at this point as always whether it's any of our like vorthos type content like this or over on video games for all if you like this kind of like play the game and then spend some time at the end analyzing it and talking it out with all of you as well and you have not checked out video games for all in the linked in the description below truly you're please do so yeah you're missing out big time I, I highly highly encourage you to do that especially if you like a style of game like this because yes. we've played styles of games like this yes that are more complex like Joe was talking about a minute ago where yeah. he was saying you know if those earlier decisions had actually influenced the last decision, yeah. you know, and you know, those those games kind of create those decision trees, yep. right? Yep. Whereas this one pretty much doesn't do that. Yeah, and there's there's different ways of doing this style of game. Like I said, you can you can have it be like building up a, a certain skill level and you're like leveling up and so when you get to a certain level you're able to do certain things like i said with the like convince it like talking them down with your diplomacy right. skill or whatever um <clears throat> but you could also do it with like the friendship mechanic like i mentioned mm -hmm. and so there are different ways of doing it this game did none of those and just it again it seems and i could be wrong on this and i i apologize if i am but it seemed to me that None of the decisions but that final decision mattered. Right. In in terms of taking you in a different direction. Like, 
we technically did not go to the fighting pits right. because when we went to the poisoner shop, that's when we got kidnapped or right. whatever. So, and that's kind of when it took us to the end game here. Yeah, and that kind of sucks because I didn't want to see the fighting pits at least. And again, we could, uh, we're not going to do it in this video, trust me, because it's, it's long enough. Thank you for, for hanging out with us. But um, we could, as we know, go back, 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 until we get to the part where we chose the poisoner shop and choose the fighting pits instead, and then the poisoner shop, which would then get us to this point. But could we just load one of those other... Again, yes and no. Not for the purposes of this video. And I don't recall, we didn't save anywhere close to it. We'd oh, okay. have to like quickly go through and, and still be picking all those other options okay. along the way or whatever. Oh, so it's okay. not it's not worth it for this video, but. Well, obviously not in this video, but. No, and we, we're not gonna, so that's the other thing. I would say, folks, this video is coming out on Monday. Stay tuned to JAR this Thursday, uh, especially if you're into Vorthos content for more information on what our Monday videos are gonna look like for at least the next few weeks. Okay. Because yeah. there's some thoughts, Amy and I have some discussions to have about how we're gonna plan out our content and it will all be time dependent on what we have the opportunities for, etc. cetera. But um, yeah, it's, it's, it's important to us to be able to get out all of the stuff for this for all of this uh, Kamigawa Neon Dynasty content that we're putting out, especially the Vorthos version of this right. content. Uh, just as a reminder, uh, we stream every Monday and Friday on this channel, 8 to 10 p.m. Eastern. Uh, on Mondays, if you're a fan of Magic the Gathering, the day that this video came out, it, uh, uh, obviously, we will be streaming MTG Arena uh, for two hours, so definitely come check that out. And on Fridays, we stream uh, random video games, whatever we happen to be playing, that then go over to Video Games for All as a VOD after the fact. Uh, this Friday, we will be continuing our playthrough of X-Men Legends 2 for the PlayStation 2. We've been having a blast with that, so definitely stay tuned for all of those things. That's why subscribing and ringing that bell is super important. Um, but uh, just as a reminder, if you want to join us to continue learning more about Kamigawa Neon Dynasty, discussing all of the different like classes and races and groups and etc. Of course, we would love to hear your thoughts down in the comments below of this game as a whole, of the different options or, or finales that we just saw. And what was your favorite? That's what I want to know. Of the four options, yeah. what was the best ending in your opinion? But joining us for this type of a video and doing that joining us on our thursday jar videos where we review the magic story uh collectively those are a great way for you to join us as we show off our hashtag forthos pride thank you so much for being here for any and all of this series that you did thank you for joining us for any and all of our content that you do but for now from us here at the geek for all family of channels i have been joe and i'm amy and as we always say, in whichever video of ours you watch next, we will see you all next time. Thanks, everybody.